Okay, another one. Um, a wheel has an angular acceleration of such and such. Okay, so let's highlight that. That's clearly going to be important. Um, determine the magnitude and velocity acceleration of a point P located on the rim of the wheel after the wheel's gone around two times. Okay, wheel's got a certain radius. Starts with a certain angular velocity. Blah blah blah. Okay, I we should we should draw a picture on this. Okay, um, let me see if I can do that. Not bad. Okay, and then we have a certain radius for this thing out here, like this. Um, I'm just going to call it R. Uh, it tells us that R is actually equal to point two. Okay, and um, oops, that was underneath my my mug shot. Okay, but anyway, uh, it's R. We've got a value for that. Uh, let's put a point P on here, and I'm just going to put it right there, like that. And it's asking for the velocity acceleration of that point. Okay. There is a potential tricky bit in here, but we'll we'll work through it. So we're going to need V of T, right? And then you see how it says magnitude? Yeah, watch out for that. Watch out for that. Because we are not only going to have a tangential acceleration, but because we're moving on a circle, we've got centripetal acceleration as well, okay? And so what we're going to end up doing in the end is we're going to end up um, saying that our acceleration is AT squared plus AC squared. Just like that. Okay. Let's go ahead and get VT out of this thing first. Okay. Uh, alpha is 0.5. Um, theta. Hmm. Well, how are we going to make it out of that? Well, we're going to have to do our use our tools from differential equations uh, again, which means that alpha is omega d omega d theta, but all of that is equal to 0.5 theta. So let me split it all up. So we got 0.5 theta is omega d omega. And then we're going to have to integrate everything. Um, we begin with omega is equal to 2. And theta, I suppose, is going to be 0. It doesn't really say, so we might as well call it 0. Then we'll go up to some arbitrary endpoint omega and theta, then that's going to give us theta as a function of omega. Okay. Um, we plug in theta and we'll have omega out of that. So let's carry forward with this stuff here. So I'm going to have 0.5 divided by 2 theta squared from 0 to theta, and that's going to be equal to 1 half omega squared from 2 to my arbitrary omega. If I keep going, I'm going to have 1 fourth theta squared on this side. On the other side, once I plug some things in, I got 1 half omega squared. My 2, 2 squared becomes a 4, but I've got another half on there. My 4 then turns into a half. So I've got minus a half on that. Nope, just kidding. Not minus a half, minus 2. Just like this. Um, do a little bit of algebra uh, to solve for omega. So I'll take my 2 to the other side. I'll multiply everything times 2. And then I'll take the square root of the universe. So that's going to end up giving me 1 half theta squared plus 4 is equal to omega. All right. Once I have that, I just plug in my value for theta. And then I have omega. So just remember that theta 
it's in revolutions again. So I got to go 2 by 2 pi to get 4 pi once I plug in and I get my value for omega. All right. Now, the value for alpha, which we're going to need for our tangential acceleration, is super easy to find. So let's go ahead and pull that guy up because it tells us alpha is, oh, sorry, it's a little too sloppy for my taste there. So alpha is 0.5 theta. Let's put in 0.5 times 4 pi. And so we get 2 pi is our value for alpha. All right. Uh, let's plug in. Let's go ahead and plug in for omega, see what we come up with. So you need the square root of 0.5 onto 4 pi quantity squared plus 4. So I don't know if. I don't know if that's helpful or not. And so that's going to be equal. I got 9.108, I'm going to call it. So omega 9.108. Okay. Yeah, that's four sigs, I know. Um, but at the very end, I'm going to trim it down to three. So to get my actual VT value, VT is just R times omega. And so I can take 0.2 times that. So I got 0.2 times my 9.108. And my VT is going to be 1.8. Two. Okay, and and I'm just gonna leave it as three sigs because then we would that's what we would put into mastering like that. Okay, let's work on the acceleration part. Okay, we've got alpha, so that means we can get at really easily. I'm gonna move over here, so at. Is just going to be r times alpha so that means i'm 0 0.2 times 2 pi or 0.4 pi and of course we'd, we'd have to plug in um what that what that number was with three sig figs uh in the end okay um now the centripetal acceleration we got two ways to go with this okay two ways to go so we could do it what which might be your default just to say that the centripetal acceleration is going to be v squared over r and that's fine but remember that v is actually r times omega so we can have another expression for the centripetal acceleration our r squared divided by r leaves us with an r, so we get r omega squared, just like that. So we could use that as well. And let's go ahead and do that. So we got 0.2. Our omega value we found was this weird guy, 9.108 squared. I'm mean, calculating this out, square times 0.2, and I got 16.6. Okay. Um, now that I've got those two numbers, all we need to do is take them this guy here and this guy here and we're going to plug it in up here to get our total magnitude of acceleration okay um, 
again, pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, always keep an eye out when they say magnitude of your brain should, should immediately be like, Oh, this is a warning. I'm going to need some components somewhere uh, like that. Okay.